What's up, guys? Today, I want to talk about clutch performance in sports. So this is the whole five, four, three, two, go, right? And spoiler, I think clutch performance is not important, almost at all. It's very insignificant in my opinion. And I'll explain why. First, I want to start off by saying, I'm going to build up to, I'm going to lead into that. So lately I've been trying to be, to fix the problem I have with losing. Like I'm such a shitty loser. I get pissed off when I lose. I get really salty, get really emotional. When I win, I don't get too happy. I get a little excited, but I get, I feel the losses more. The problem with this is, without getting into too much detail, is, you know, when you lose and you get salty, if you're going to play again, it has a lot of things wrong with it, first of all. And I've covered those in previous podcasts. But one more thing I want to talk about is that when you lose and you get upset, and if you still got to play, those negative emotions are going to affect your performance. And I think we all know this. Deep down, we all know this. The thing is, when there are small losses inside of a game, before the game's even over, there are plays throughout the game, you know? You're, even in basketball, they score 100 points. So even just your opponent scoring once on you, it's a small loss. And it's an opportunity for you to lose control of your emotions and your performance start to degrade. So it's so important that we control our emotions out there and not get upset. And I'm sure we all know this. Deep down, we all know this. And I, in my opinion, it impacts our performance greatly. And in a negative way, obviously. Some people will make the argument that like, oh, I play better when I'm angry. Okay. Whatever, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just whatever. I mean, if, if you're going to say that, then, I mean, I'm sorry, but you're being a punk. That is such a crutch, but you just didn't, you just didn't have it naturally. Now it's one thing if you're already just kind of naturally better than everyone and you're just kind of autopiloting through and someone makes you mad and now you, um, you know, start actually trying. Sure. Okay. When someone says they play better when they're mad, that is very few specific cases. But for 99% of cases, so in essence, kind of what I'm saying here in a nutshell is there's no place for emotions in competition. Now, this is going to be some golden nuggets of wisdom here and where I'm going with this. And I, I've put so much thought into this and I don't think there's any changing my mind on this, where I'm going with this. So as we've talked about before, who do you want to learn from? You know, a lot of people are in love with Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Michael Jordan. But these are not players you want to learn from. A lot of their success comes from extreme athleticism. Now, we've been over that in detail. I won't continue on that. So if you can at least agree with that, that's where we part ways. So just stop listening now. Now. When I say there's no place for emotion in competition, I mean, that's kind of the first thing that flashes in your mind is like the fieriness of Kobe or MJ, you know, these, these 
iconic athletes that we've grown up on. So it's kind of just ingrained in our, in our brain that this is how sports are played, the glory, the, the fieriness, the heart of a lion, the heart of a champion. We can picture all these athletes with these screaming, fist-pumping faces and, you know, that glorious moment of victory. Or just still photos of determined faces and filled with emotion, actually. Faces filled with emotion is, is what I'm trying to say here. Whether that be high or low, even the defeated opponent, you will see just filled with emotion. But if we pump the brakes here a second and think about this analytically. So what I'm trying to do here is paint a picture of just the general image you get in your head when you think of like sports and championships. When I say these words, um, clutch, when I see these words, what's like the first thing that pops into your head is for me, it's these kind of images, right? Uh, emotion filled faces and, uh, the, the clock winding down and, and stuff like this, right? Okay. I think I painted that picture enough. Now that you have that picture in your head, let's not forget these are not necessarily players you want to learn from. Much of their success comes from having athletic advantages and gifts, physically gifted. So they're winning despite mistakes, leaks of discipline. These leaks, these mental leaks like Poor emotional control. So we've been taught our entire lives examples by these athletes that are incorrect, that we stuff we should not be doing. If LeBron James jumps off a bridge, are you going to jump off a bridge? So let's not forget, these are not necessarily players you want to learn from. And again, if you can't agree with that, just leave now. Sure, you can learn stuff from them. Sure, oh, sure, you can learn some stuff from them. Sure. But there are much better players to learn from. So now let's look at someone who succeeded despite being at a disadvantage without these gifts to make up for leaks in their discipline. I mean, I've set the groundwork in previous pod work, podcasts already. I hope you've listened to them because I've already set the groundwork here. So now let's look at players that have succeeded despite their, their disadvantages without these athletic gifts, which clearly must have no leaks in their discipline or very few or less. These are the ones we want to learn from. Let's look at someone like Stephen Curry. Six foot three, can barely dunk, yet is arguably the best player in the world. Arguably. I mean, the man's pretty stoic. Have you ever seen him get mad? Very rarely. He gets excited sometimes, but it's more of like, a, I'm just having fun. It's not like, he does get excited sometimes, which I think, personally, I don't think that's very good. I think when you, and you kind of get excited for doing well and have a bit of a celebration, I have, so this is like a concept that I've, I've kind of coined. I will take full credit for it and I'll pat myself on the back for this. Premature celebration. 
And it's where you kind of like, you know, you, you get excited because you did something well, but the game's not over yet. Premature celebration. And I see him do that sometimes. But I don't see him do it like a fucking primal scream. Now, this one is horrible. When I see that primal scream because of a dunk or something, oh, I think that's just the fucking worst. That is so terrible. You're going to have this crazy adrenaline dump, and you're just going to play like shit after that. Hell, you're using so much energy doing that, that primal <laughs> roar. Give me a break, dude. What is that? You're a professional. And what it is, these fucking 22-year-old kids getting paid millions of dollars that were gifted this ability to fucking leap. And I put in a lot of hard work, too. I'll give them that. Now, some of you are probably contrarians, immediately trying to think of, like, um, there's place for emotion in sports. Like, well, what about this? And what about that? Okay. There is some place for emotion in sports. And I don't even want to try to think of them right now, just because, like, that's not what I'm trying to get across here. Um, yeah, sure. There are sometimes some benefits, um, but mostly, by and large, it's 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 a crutch. And it, in the bigger picture, it's better to not have these emotions. Now, with all that out of the way, I've just lectured for eleven minutes and forty-five seconds on why there's no place for emotion in sports. So, all that being said, why would the last 10 seconds, the clutch, quote unquote, be any different? Because that's all the last 10 seconds of a game is. The last 10 seconds is mathematically no different than the first 10 seconds. I think we can agree on that. Am I missing something there? I mean, the first 10 seconds is 10 seconds. The last 10 seconds is 10 seconds. One point is one point. What's the difference here? Am I missing something? Mathematically, it's the same, right? We can agree on that, right? So then why is there this emphasis on the clutch? And I think it's because we've been raised our whole lives with this imagery and this iconic these iconic moments in sports that have emotionally been drilled into our hearts, cemented into our hearts, and have this home in our brain that we will never forget. Derek Fisher's .04 shot. Uh, Tracy McGrady's shot. Uh, whatever the fucking, that, that moment in sports that it's the same, guys. It's no different. Two points in the first quarter is the same as two points in the fourth quarter. And I feel some teams have made, have won championships because they didn't focus on this. So what, now I'm going to rewind a little bit and go back to what first made me have a light bulb in this concept. In poker, you're analyzing hands, right? And a lot of time, you're like, you're, you can't sleep at night. You'll, you'll be thinking about the hand that busted you out of the tournament. And you're just thinking about it and thinking about it. Well, maybe if I would have done this differently, maybe, I'll, maybe I should have done this instead. Oh, like, oh, if I would have done this, I could have gotten 0.0001% more equity. Like, you run the math. And if I would have done this instead. <clears throat> and you're dwelling on that clutch hand, that last hand, the last play of the game. You're dwelling on it and dwelling on it. And it's emotionally uh, cementing a place in your heart. Because it had so much writing on that last moment. 
and that hand is where you lost that hand of poker is where I lost the game. But then you go back and you look at some of your other hands and you're like, oh shit, there was a big mistake here. Oops, that was stupid. Oh, I didn't even play this hand. I must've been in the bathroom or something. Oh, I, what am I doing in this hand? Wait, don't like you're re, I'm like watching a video, reviewing the video of me playing. I'm like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Travis, what are you doing? And you realize like, oh, okay, if I would have done this, I would have saved some money here. Oh, if I would have done that, I'd save some money here. So that last hand was, I could have saved 0.001 penny. Oh, the other hand, I could have saved a hundred bucks. And that hand was the, in the middle of the game. And sports are no different than this. Just because you have this heartfelt emotion of a play doesn't mean shit. Just because it, it was exciting, it doesn't mean shit. Excitement is an emotion. There's no place for emotion in sports. At least very little place for it. It's a bit of a crutch. Two points in the fourth quarter is the same as two points in the first. And when I say teams have made a living off, which teams have won championships by using this philosophy that I'm talking about here, I feel like the Spurs, they always would jump out to a lead the first, second, and third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, you would see the Lakers come back because the Lakers are the more talented team. But they were not, they didn't have the discipline. They weren't. They, they were, they had leaks and they didn't tighten down until the fourth quarter. A lot of times they're like, okay, it's the fourth quarter time to play for real now. Oh, you were playing for real. And this is a place for you as an underdog to get an edge. If you're an underdog, I will say this as a caveat, there is some value to clutch performance. And there may be more of this, something that I'm not seeing here. Um, because I went a long time heavily valuing clutch performance and being a very clutch performer myself, I, in my own opinion. And I think the reason I was such a clutch performance is my focus would increase in those high leverage moments. As do a lot of players, I think, have this ability. So I kind of don't want to oversell what I'm, what I'm preaching here. There is some value to it. And, and f furthermore, it's good to have a player like that on every team where you may have some players who perform po poorly in those situations and choke. So you want to have some that perform very well so you're not like hemorrhaging um, equity or points or whatever the case may be. A closer, if you will. And that's, for me, that's about the ex extent of the value of this. Unless I'm missing something, that's the extent of the value of this, in my opinion. And I put a lot of thought into this. It's great to have someone that can close, close the game for you. Other than that, what else? I mean, am I missing something here? Two points is two points. And I think a lot of people have been... Not misled, but just have this perception of clutch performance and overestimating its value, overestimating its importance. So don't make this mistake, guys. So here's, here's what you do. Now that you have this knowledge, here's what you do. When you're reviewing your play, if you have a videotape recorded, uh, whatever the case may be, when you're reviewing your performance, don't dwell on that last play of the game. There's going to be other things in there that you should be, that are way larger opportunities to improve, to gain equity. For example, you maybe you got a tech a technical in the game and the other point got the other team got a whole point. They got a free throw out of it. Like that's huge. That's fucking huge. But here you are 
evaluating the last second of the game, it's a mistake. And that's just a mistake to, to think this way and to dwell on the last second. I see this all the time on like analyst shows. Oh, like he should have, he shouldn't have passed it or he shouldn't have shot it or he should have shot. Like they're all focused on this one play, but there were like 12 other blunders throughout the game that nobody's giving a fuck about. There will be like a huge mistake in the middle of the game, like a huge turnover or something. Nobody's really talking about that. The headlines are, he makes his shot at the buzzer. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, okay. I think I've beat a dead horse. Uh, it's just uh, something I'm really put a lot of thought into and yeah. Okay guys. I'll see you later. Bye.